Hey everybody, uh, we're talking about how the United States is owned by the Roman cult. And this is taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume 2, under the definition of Mort Main. And yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. For when they were driven out of all their former holes, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fee off east for the use of of the religious houses. Thus distinguishing between the possession and the use, the act receiving the actual profits while the season of the land remained with the nominal fiofi who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy, to be bound in conscience to account to his sestike use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts the foundation of modern conveyancing. So, uh, this says volumes. This says a whole bunch of things. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll cover that right here. So, we'll go back. So, uh, this is DC code, which is approved March 3rd, 1901. Uh, you can find it at um, 31 stat 1208. This is uh, that in addition to the jurisdiction conferred in the preceding section, plenary jurisdiction, that's military dictatorship, is hereby given to said court, holding the said special term to hear and determine all questions relative to the execution of any and all wills. Gee, that sounds like a sestike use. The legal estate to be in the sestike use. That's at 31 stat 1432. And um, as citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, um, uh, the Constructive uh, Sestike Trust of the United States, Inc., under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of USA and USA, Inc., U.S., Inc. And that's Congressional Record, June 13, 1967, page 15,641 through 15,646. Uh, that's obviously a summary of what those five pages of congressional records say. Every taxpayer is assessed to K trust having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust and to, uh, to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. Slater's protestations to the effect that he derives no benefit from the United States government have no bearing on his legal obligation to pay income tax. Unless the defendant can establish that he's not a citizen of the United States, the IRS possesses authority to determine of his federal tax liability. And so a U.S. citizen is a taxpayer um, and a U.S. citizen is a Sestake Trust. And so if the Roman cult created the Sestake Trust, uh, the, and if the U.S. citizens a Sestake Trust, and if the Roman cult, then the Roman cult owns the U.S. citizen. Think about it. If the legal estate of the United States is the Sestake Trust, then the Roman cult owns the United States. And uh, the Roman cult runs the so-called courts and wants to account or tax the rents and emoluments of their fraudulently created Sestake Trust. That's exactly what's going on. Um, civil law, Roman law, and Roman civil law are convertible phrases, meaning the same system of jurisprudence, that rule of action, which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiar for itself, more properly called municipal law, to distinguish it from the law of nature and from international law. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Uh, Congress claiming its martial law power to declare war, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions, imposed martial law in the United States and never discontinued it. The result was an extension of the military and municipal jurisdiction of Congress, but where is the evidence of this? Look at the 13th Amendment, the Civil Rights Act, the Legal Tender Laws, the 14th Amendment, etc., etc. And that's Diet versus Turner. Um, the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellett, uh, Utah Supreme Court. The 14th Amendment is an extension of the national military powers presently used in the municipal character and enforced by municipal laws and stretched far beyond their original limitations and enforced by Article I tribunals. That's exactly what's going on. And again, that's taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ellett, Utah Supreme Court. Capitus diminutio, meaning the diminishing of status, okay? So they're using their, they're assaulting you with their Roman law, okay? So first of all, we talked about how the U.S. citizen is a Sestake Trust. Sestake Trust falls under uh, ecclesiastical law, okay? So 
um, and, uh, and, and Roman law. And, uh, and so they're in Roman law, they're assaulting you with this Roman law. So now we're going to talk a little bit about some Roman law, uh, uh, distinguishing our abridgment of personality. Uh, why do you think they spell your name in all block capital letters? That's the Sestake Trust. It's not you. Uh, capita's diminutio maximum, meaning the maximum loss of status through the use of capitalization. The highest and most comprehensive loss of status this occurred when a man's condition was changed from one of freedom to one of bondage, when he became a slave. It's all about slavery. It's Roman law. Swept away all rights of citizenship. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Some more stuff about Roman law. To take an instance, when a person sui juris has given himself an adoption or one passed under maintenance, all our property, incorporal and corporal, and all that is due them is acquired by the adopting father or co-eptionator, except those things which perish by capitis diminutio, of which kind are a usufruct, an obligation to services on the part of freemen contracted by oath, and matters enforceable by a statute. So all statutes are Roman cult. And that's taken from the Commentaries of Gaius, The Rules of Ulpian. Translated. That's a book that was published in like the 300 AD or something like that. And this is The Law of Persons by Joseph R. Long, published 1912. Okay, classification of persons. Okay, persons are all Roman law. Okay, Roman law distinguished three kinds of personal status uh, or degree. Um... And so then the loss of freedom was uh, a Roman citizen could not be legally sold in slavery, but may become a slave by condemnation for crime or by being captured by an enemy. Okay, this is all Roman law. Um, and so um, they're enemies. They're, you are, it's all warfare. Capitus diminutio is the destruction of the caput, or legal personality. Capitus diminutio, so to speak, wipes out the former individual and puts a new one in its place. Being the, between the old and new individual, there is, legally speaking, nothing in common. A juristic personality may be thus destroyed in one of three ways. By loss of status libertatis, by loss of capitus diminutio, uh, this is capitus diminutio maxima. And then by lot of status civitatis, which is uh, capitus diminutio media. Okay, so this is all about status. By severance of the agnatic family, uh, capitus diminutio minima. And this is taken from a textbook of the history and system of Roman private law. So it's all contracts. And uh, Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. They assault you with one of their little contracts, one of their satanic contracts. That's exactly what they're doing. Slavery is a status under Roman civil law. Uh, capitus diminutio maxima, the diminution of personal legal status is resulting in being reduced to slavery. Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Status, okay, it's all about status. Standing condition, uh, a corporation has no status as a citizen outside the jurisdiction where it was created, okay? So think about it. If they're assaulting you with that U.S. citizen, then it's District of Columbia. You're in District of... I don't care if you're in Texas. I don't care if you're in Arizona. You're in District of Columbia. That's where you're at. And it's a, corpora a corporation is a citizen, a citizen's a corporation. If they're assaulting you with their U.S. citizen slave, then you're in District of Columbia. Law of status is a category of law dealing with personal and proprietary rights, whether in rem or in personam. It's one of three departments into which civil law is divided. Black's Law Dictionary 8th edition. Status, person's legal condition were personal proprietary, some total of person's legal rights, duties, liabilities, and other legal relations of any particular group of them separately considered. Um, so it talks about different kinds of status. The underlying part, uh, number four there, a person's legal condition so far as imposed by the law without the person's consent as opposed to a condition that the person has agreed by agreement, the status of a slave. So it's all contracts. Okay, they get you into one of their so-called contracts. And that's taken from an introduction to Roman law, 1881, and that's published in Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. With Roman civil law, status is everything. There's no real justice. Justice is for sale, depending on who you are. Status, right? That's what status is all about. Deals with statutes and corporations, all satanic. Uh, with common law, status is nothing. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody's treated the same. So this is Congress. I guess you probably recognize it, but notice the uh, fascia. Okay, they're behind the podium. And uh, we're going to talk a little about that. It's all in Roman law. And um, 
This is why uh, the United States is owned by the Roman cult, or it's just more evidence, I guess you might say. Um, the Fasces had the origin in the uh, Etruscan uh, civilization that was passed on to ancient Rome, where it symbolized the magistrate's power and jurisdiction. It, it, it is pre present in the older design of the Mercury dime behind the podium of the United States House of Representatives. Okay, so the fascia is present on the, on the Mercury dimes and, and behind the podium of the United States House of Representatives, and that's what you saw back here. Okay, so that's the fasci, fascia, um, and that's the a, a derivative word of the fascist party. Okay, so they're saying that they're fascist. Okay, yeah, think about it. That's exactly what they're saying, okay? So that there's a fascist organization. Yeah, right there. Uh, anyways, the symbol of the fasci uh, suggested strength through unity. A single rod is easily broken, but the bundle very difficult to break. The axe represented the power over life and death. Okay, so notice here there's the axe on the, on the right-hand side of the screen there. You got the axe and, and the bundle of rods and uh that's kind of blurry so it's hard to see but i'm guessing that the, if there's an axe there uh anyways um the fasci a bundle of lictors symbolized power and authority of ancient rome beginning in the early roman kingdom the highest magistrate was the dictator was entitled to 24 uh, uh lictors or amphases the uh, acts indicated the magistrate's judicial power included capital punishment. During times of emergency, however, the Roman Republic might choose a dictator to lead for a limited uh, time period who was the only magistrate to be granted capital punishment authority within the pomerium. Lictors attending the dictator uh, kept the axes in their fasces, uh, even inside the pomerium, a sign that the dictator had the ultimate power in his own hands. And so, again... Uh, this is all coming from Rome, um, and it's uh, showing that uh, Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult. And the the fasces come from the Rome and Roman law. Fasces represent penal power, plenary power. Uh, fasces represent dictatorship by magistrate. Magistrate is the highest ranking official in the government, such as the king in a monarchy, the president of the republic, or the governor in a state local official who possesses whatever power specified by an appointment or statutory grant so you can have a local magistrate too but they don't have that kind of power anyone who's wearing a military uniform is an agent of the roman cult the wearing of the clerical dress or religious habit on the part of lay folk is liable to the same penalty on the part of the state of the misuse of the military uniform that's article 10 of the concordat of 1933 and so that's signed between the roman cult and hitler and uh, almost all so-called governments are bankrupt and op owned and operated by the Roman cult. At common law, a sheriff would have a star only and a judge would wear a business suit. At common law, there's no uniform. That's why in the old days, they never wore a uniform. Okay, they just had a star or they, uh, the judge had a business suit. And there you go. There's some bail priest uniforms. See them all? Yeah, those are bail priest uniforms. Uh, chapter 854, this is the DC Code. And again, uh, uh, goes back to the um, um, Sestake use. Okay, this is uh, the DC Code, uh, Section 252, Presumption of Death. This can be located at 31 Stat 1230. Uh, if any person shall leave his domicile with any known intention of changing the same, shall not return to be heard from for seven years from the time of his so leaving, he shall be presumed to be dead. In any case, wherein his death shall come in question, unless proof be made that he is alive at the, until that time. And so, basically, that gives them the right to presume you're dead. Okay? The Sestake Trust. Okay? That's exactly where it comes from. And it's an established fact the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 79-719, declared by Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. H.G.R. Uh, 192, 73rd Congress, in session June 5, 1933, joint uh, resolution to suspend the gold standard and uh, abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. That's U.S. Congressional Record, March 17, 1993, Volume 33. So, if you think about it, they abrogated the gold clause, um, and and so then nothing's paid. 
Okay, so so again, the federal government exists in name only. It's all an illusion. It's all under the Roman cult now, and um, that's you know that they were circulating the mercury dime. They were doing all sorts of stuff to tell you that that's what was coming. Under an international law of warfare, all parties to a cause appear by nom de guerre, and each an alien enemy cannot maintain an action during a war in his own name, so they're making war on you, okay? Everybody's saying they want peace? Well, the Roman cult doesn't do peace. They do war, okay? That's all they do. That's all they ever do, okay? It's all warfare. All court cases are warfare. Commerce is commercial warfare. A judge, or a, a, a war like World War II, that's, that's just a giant commercial transaction. That's all it is, okay? Uh, a party is a person. A mixed war is one made on one side by public authority and by the other by mere private persons, okay? Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. So it's mixed warfare. Everything they do is warfare. And the sooner we get out from underneath this Roman cult, they, you know, we turn them into a smoking hole or something like that. I'd like to see that happen. But uh, the sooner we get out from underneath, the, that's when peace will come. Until then, there'll be no peace. The president, if he shall find it compatible with the safety of the United States, with the successful prosecution of the war made during the time of war, the president may, through any agency that he may designate under such rules and regulations as he may prescribe by means of instructions, licenses, or otherwise, regulate, direct, compel, nullify, void, prevent, or prohibit, or exercising any right, power, or privilege with respect to any property by any person subject to the jurisdiction of the United States, and upon the terms directed by the president any such in such agency or person, in such designated agency or person may perform any and all acts incident to the accomplishment or furtherance of these purposes, okay? So this is the Trading with the Enemy Act. Title 50, United States Code, Appendix 5. They kind of hide that on you. They don't want that being obvious. And they actually, uh, this is the National Emergencies Act in uh, 1976, uh, located at 90 Stat 1255, being enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of uh, the United States of America and Congress assembled that this act may be cited as the National Emergencies Act. So they repealed all the national emergencies except the Trading with the Enemy Act. Section 502. The provisions of this act shall not apply to the following provisions of law, the powers and authorities conferred thereby, and actions taken thereunder. Section 5B, the Act of October 6, 1917, as amended, which is 12 U.S.C. 95A and 50 U.S.C. Appendix 5. Okay, so the Trading with the Enemy Act is not um, repealed. And this is the Uniform uh, Commercial Code. Uh, and uh, this is an act to enact the Uniform Commercial Code for the District of Columbia and for other purposes. And the United States is located in the District of Columbia. And that's location of the debtor. And that's under the Uniform Commercial Code. Whenever they're insulting you with their Uniform Commercial Code, you are in the District of Columbia. If you use the Uniform Commercial Code, you are saying you are in the U District of Columbia. UCC is, and that's all go tied into the Unidroit and the UN. Okay, I never ever reference the Uniform Commercial Code. I shouldn't say I never do. I rarely do. If I do, I say it's their Uniform Commercial Code, but but uh, I try not to. If I do, it's because I really, really have to for some reason, but otherwise I don't. And while the 14th Amendment does not create a national citizenship, it has the effect of making that citizenship paramount and dominant instead of derivative and dependent upon state citizenship. And that's the U.S. Supreme Court. So this is further evidence that the United States is owned and operated by the Roman cult. They turned citizenship upside down into the opposite of what it was intended. The Amendment 14th reversed and annulled the original policy of the Constitution. Okay, so it's it's all, remember, the United States government exists today in name only. Okay, that's it. It's all Roman cult. It is evident that they have not the political rights that are invested in citizens of the states. They're not constituents of any community which is vested in any sovereign power of government. Their position partakes more of a character subject than the, the, uh, of subjects than of citizens. They are subject to the laws of the United States but have no voice in its management. If they are allowed to make laws, the validity of these laws is derived from the sanction of government in which they are not represented. Mere citizenship they may have, but political rights of citizens they cannot enjoy. Okay, so again, it criminally converted a U.S. citizen into the opposite of what it was intended. And so then these criminal, criminally converted U.S. citizens 
it doesn't matter that they vote. I mean, the, their vote means nothing. Okay, that's that's why they rig the elections. Okay, and so um, it's all a charade. Okay, it's all a fraud. These people, that's all they deal in is lies and fraud. They're Satanists. Okay, I mean, why would you expect Satanists to be anything but Satanists? They're, they engage in lies. They're, it's fraud, theft, murder, extortion. They're Satanists, and it's about time we put it to an end. The term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. The only absolute and unqualified right of a U.S. citizen is the residence within the territory boundaries of the United States. U.S. citizens don't have any rights. They're criminally converted U.S. citizens. The term citizen in the United States is analogous to the term subject in the common law. Okay, that's the criminally converted U.S. citizens. Uh, uh, the privilege and immunities of citizens of the United States do not necessarily include all the rights protected by the first eight amendments uh, to the federal constitution against the powers of the federal government. Okay, so again, that's the criminally converted U.S. citizens don't have any rights. Citizenship is a political status and may de be defined and privilege limited by Congress. Uh, therefore, the U.S. citizens residing in one of the states of the Union are classified as property and franchises of the federal government as an individual entity. Okay, so your property. You're a slave, okay? And, and I just uh, uploaded a video about uh, how a U.S. citizen is a slave. Residents, as distinguished from citizens, are aliens who are permitted to take up a permanent abode in the country, being bound to the society by reason of dwelling in it. They are subject to its laws so long as they remain there, and being protected by it, they must defend it. Although they do not enjoy all the rights of citizens, they only have certain privileges which the law or custom gives them. Permanent residence are those who have been given the right of perpetual residence. They are a sort of citizen of less privileged character and subject to the society without enjoying all its advantages. Their children succeed to their status by their right of perpetual residence given to them by the state passes to their children. And that's taken from the Law of the Nations by Vitell, Book 1, Chapter 19, Section 13, page 87. Okay, so again... I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not a resident. <laughs> if you're a resident, then you're one of the slaves. One does not necessarily become a non-resident by, by absconding or absenting himself from his place of abode. Well, <laughs> think about what they're saying. <laughs> it's all in what you tell them. That's what they're saying. It's all in what you tell them. In other words, you just uh, uh, quit giving evidence against yourself for one thing. <laughs> And then we told them that the spying is supposed to keep them safe. <laughs> if we remain silent when our popularly elected government violates the laws that is sworn to uphold and steals the freedoms we elected it to protect, we will only we will have only ourselves to blame when Big Brother is everywhere. Somehow I doubt my father's generation fought the Nazis in World War II only to permit a totalitarian government to flourish here. Judge Andrew Napolitano. He is a good man. I'll tell you, I like him a lot. Fascism in power is to is the open terroristic dictator of the most reactionary, the most chauvinistic, the most imperialistic elements of finance capitalism. Well, okay, so that's what's in Congress. Okay, that's Congress. That's Karl Marx said that. They're 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 the ones, I mean, I guess they like Karl Marx. Mussolini defined fascism, fascism as a unit of state and corporate power, the Union. Using that definition, can we claim that North America is anything but fascist? Absolutely. Okay, Congress has demonstrated. You saw their picture. They are fascists. If the American people ever allow the private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all the property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Well, how many people are homeless today? And it's going to get worse, I guarantee you. The end of democracy and the defeat of the American Revolution will occur when government falls into the hands of the lending institutions and moneyed and corporations. Okay, well, hello, don't you think that's what's happened? It is the duty of the patriot to protect his government, from, uh, protect his country from its government. Okay, Thomas Paine's right on Thomas Paine. It is not the function of our government to keep the citizen from falling into error. It's the function of the citizen to keep the government from falling into error. That's uh, U.S. Supreme Court. So let's fire the Roman cult. 
The end justifies the means is satanic. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Put darkness for light and light for darkness. That's what these Satanists do. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren or the children of Israel, make merchandise of him or sell of him, then that thief shall die and thou shalt put evil away from among you. we got to put an end to this Roman cult. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and damnation slumbereth not. There, these Roman cult is all these prisons. Uh, uh, we have more people in prisons in America than in any other country on the planet. And uh, um, uh, I would say probably about 90% of them don't need to be there. It's all commercial crimes. Um, and so, uh, again, they're being sold into slavery. Give me liberty or give me death after he witnessed the man flogged to death for refusing to take a license. Uh, by which he also went and preached to the spirits in prison. You know, um, um, there was someone telling me recently how someone had a near-death experience and they found, they saw the recent pope that died uh, and he's in hell. And that's where he belongs and that's where they're all going. And that's what spirit prison is in hell. It shall come to pass in that day the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in prison and after many days shall they be visited. It behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself to resist invasions of it in the case of others or the case may by change of circumstances become his own. Uh, if you love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest from freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chain set lightly upon you, and may our posterity forget that you are ever our countrymen. And no one could say it better than Samuel Adams. And this one here, it behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself and resist invasions of it in the case of others, or the case may by change of circumstances become his own. Well, I think what Jefferson's talking about there is karma, or, you know, the old saying, what goes around comes around. So um, we all need to start uh, getting involved. When shall it be said in any country of the world, my poor are happy, neither ignorance or distress is to be found among them, my jails are empty of prisoners, my streets of beggars, the age are not in want, the tax is not oppressive, the rational world is my friend because I am friend of its happiness. When these things can be said, then may that country boast of its constitution and government. Well, we have nothing to boast about here. Uh, uh, the jails are, uh, we have Satanist order followers running around populating the jails. Um, we have a bunch of people that are so clueless they don't even, they go up to people after, after convicting them in a jury trial and apologizing for convicting them. I mean, what a brain dead idiot would do that, okay? Uh, uh, if they had to apologize, they should have just found them not guilty, okay? What kind of a brain dead idiot would ever do that? Uh, uh, that guy's going to hell. I mean, I tell you right now, he's going to hell. He hasn't got a clue. Uh, anyways, uh, the jails are, uh, we have Satanist order followers populating our prisoners. The streets are full of beggars. The aged are in want. The taxes are oppressive. Uh, we have a gang of criminals running the government. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, the sword come and take it any person from among them, he's taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Uh, and so this is my effort to make sure I'm blameless on Judgment Day. Either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. You are now a watchman. Circulate this video far and wide. I've got over 240 other videos. Um, how not to volunteer for the Selective Service. Uh, martial Laws here. Bar Members 1, 2, and 3. Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3. The Churchianity Series. The Do-It-Yourself Series. So um, check out some of my other videos. Uh, copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information share that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. Uh, and this last paragraph for all the Satanist order follower revenue officers operating in their private capacity. Um, uh, I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, send me an email for particulars. You can put your privileges and benefits up your rectal orifice for all the Satanist order follower revenue officers. Uh, if you find this useful, then you need to pay it forward. If you don't know what pay it forward means, then watch the movie and send me your successes. 
My blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My engineer, my email is engineerwin at yahoo. My YouTube profile is sovereign living. My Facebook community page was deleted because of uh, I did it because of uh, a censorship on the part of Facebook. I got tired of it. Uh, my private group called Sovereignty International is also being deleted. Um, um, but I want to make sure and delete it right so that I don't uh, help out Facebook thieves. Um, my Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video, and I hope you get something out of it. And, um, and uh, you need to know that the United States is owned by the Roman cult. We need to end this Roman cult, at least as far as we're concerned. Quit, quit uh, uh, being involved with these Satanists. Uh, anyways, I uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch my video, and I hope you have a real nice day.